Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. This is Joe Pugh for IFL TV. We're here at the O2 Intercontinental. We've just had the press conference for Joe Joyce versus Derek Gizora. Delighted to be joined by the man who should have been on the top table, but wasn't. Adam Morley, why wasn't you on the top table? Look, I think I was, I was delighted to get on the top table, but I think it looks imbalanced if it's me and Joe on one side and Derek on the other. I said, yeah, I'll go up there, but Derek should bring a representative up as well, and they wouldn't put one up. So I didn't want to be up there and make Joe look less important than he is. You know, why does Joe need someone next to him and Derek doesn't? I don't think it's a good look, so that's why we decided not to do it. Fair enough. Um, speaking to a, mem- a couple of members of your employees, um, they said that they felt Joe won that press conference if someone can win a press conference. First of all, how much do you look into a final press conference and do you think Joe did get the better of him? I don't think... Joe sets out in a press conference to get the better of anyone, to be honest. He's not trying to fire shots at someone else. For Joe, it's always about Joe. He is a very difficult opponent, I would say, in a press conference for someone else because he doesn't really care what anyone else says. He's really quite unmoved by it. Occasionally, someone might say something that will give him perhaps a little bit more inspiration, but it generally doesn't care. I said to him, what did Chisora say to you in the face of yourself? I can hear what he's saying. He's talking shit. So it's very hard to, to get into Joe Joyce's head. I think Derek was rambling quite a lot. He was talking a lot about Zhang, getting Zhang on FaceTime. I think he was just rambling, trying to get... He's try, now, he's trying to get in Joe's head, but he's a, Joe's a very difficult person to get in their head. I think, I think Derek probably realises his horrendous style of fight for him against Joe Joyce, who's, who's a relentless juggernaut. It's going to come at him all night. It's going to be a very, very painful night for Joe. And he's also not... Joe's not a very concussive, early one-punch finisher it's not like Joe's got that AJ Dubois Johnny Fisher finish it early power Joe wins in different ways so I think it's gonna be a long night for Derek do you think Derek has ever fought anybody like Joe Joyce in his 47 previous fights no I don't no I don't Joe's a completely different uh, fighter for him. Not, not that I'm saying he's better than everyone he's fought, because I don't I disagree with that. He's fought everyone, hasn't he? Apart from AJ, he's fought everyone. So, but I don't think he's fought anyone as relentless as Joe. I think, you know, un, underplayed is how Joe Joyce performs in the second half of fights, how relentlessly and how he's going to go up through the gears. I think he's going he's gonna to go through Derek Chisora. Let's talk about Monday. When I saw that, I absolutely, oh mate, that was so funny. Um, First of all, before I ask about what actually happened, why did you take your glasses off? Because I wanted to take a look at him. I was like, <laughs> what was he doing? Like, like, what is actually going on here? I was like, I'm actually going to look at this guy. Because he was just... It's very hard to actually see his eyes. That's why I took them off, because I couldn't actually see his eyes properly. Because I had sunglasses, he had sunglasses. I wanted to actually see what he was up to. So that's why I took him off. And what was he up to? What actually happened? Yeah, look, we were meant to do this promotion at the top of the O2... Um, we all got there. Um, he was late as always. No worries. All the cameramen got up beforehand. Uh, older guys working for TNT, Queensbury, whatever. They all go up there, lug, their, lug everything up. It's not easy walking up there with all that equipment. And then they're halfway to the top and Derek takes five steps and goes, no, nah, I can't be bothered. Turns around and walks off. Okay, fair enough. We're going to have to, according to him, we're going to have to do the whole press conference at the bottom of this thing. I thought... Why even agree to go up the top of the O2 if you don't want to go up? Claims Had he previously agreed? Of course. Well, he wouldn't be there, would he? It was very obvious what we do. It was called top of the O2. <laughs> Said he was sick, which wasn't true. And then me and Joe were just chatting about it. We said, we're going to go up anyway. Forget it. But it was annoying to not go up. Um, and then the cameramen start walking down. They start walking down because they've been summoned back down. And then Derek starts shouting at them. Effing, get down here, you effers, wasting my effing time. I thought, what a guy. Like, he hasn't gone up there. Now he's having a go at all these people. I just thought, what an idiot. Anyway, that was it. They're all having their interviews. I'm minding my own business. And then out of nowhere, Derek and Umar just come up. Derek sticks a microphone in my face. What, what's up, pussy boy? And I thought, do you know what? It's pretty hypocritical to go around calling people pussies. 
when you're so scared you can't even walk up something five-year-olds do? Okay, so in the interview, um, Derek just said he was just playing with you. Do you believe he was just on a wind-up trying to draw you and Joe out, or do you think he genuinely didn't want to go up there? Well, I mean, actions speak louder than words, don't they? Before he spoke, he wasn't going up. After he spoke, we were all at the top. I think, listen, he was ashamed. That was the only thing. He, wasn't in, he doesn't care about me. He, like, crushed me between his two fingers. He doesn't care about me, but he was ashamed that I made him realise that all these people had come out of this thing and because of how he felt, he didn't want to go up. So he was ashamed into going up. He shamed himself. So after what happened on Monday and after his words for you in the Locked In episode today, what are your feelings towards Derek Chisora? I think he's an uh, incredible ambassador for British boxing, what he's done, right? 47 fights. Lo- unaffected by losses, I think he's built an incredible brand, his management, everything Derek's done. How can you still sit there on a top table when you've lost 13 times and have a go at someone for losing twice? Incredible. Like, what a person to be able to do that. He's not the best boxer. I don't think anyone claims he is, but he's got unbelievable heart and he's got something that the public love. He can turn it on and he's a showman. So I think he's, he's an entertainer. That's what I think of him. I think a lot of weight, everything he does is for show. I don't know him as a person. I don't know Derek Chisora. I don't know him as a person, but everything he does is for show. I genuinely think what happened on Monday, he was just a bit, he felt probably a bit ashamed, embarrassed. And that's what it was. But yeah, what a performer, what a showman being able to do this. If he gets knocked out on Saturday night, it does not affect his marketability 1%. Incredible. What fight were you more confident going into? This one or the first Zhang fight? Because let's have it right, before Joyce Zhang won, Joyce was a big favourite. Big favourite. Yeah, look, I thought I thought Zhang won. I felt confident going into it because I thought Zhang's punch output round 6 to 12 would be nothing and Joe's would be high. As it turned out, that was right. If you look at the punch that output stats in that fight, that fight was stopped. People forget that fight was stopped on Joe's eye. Um, but Joe was outlanding him and starting to win the rounds. And had that fight continued, I fully, fully expect Joe would have won that. So I was confident. Am I more confident? Yeah, yeah it's a good question. No, I'm, I'm equally confident. Both fights, I think they're fights Joe should win. And I find it hard... I found it hard to see how he'd lose Zhang Wan. I thought, how's he going to lose Zhang Wan? OK, he might get knocked out early, but I don't think he's going to get knocked out early. He's got an incredible chin. He lost it on the eye. And he couldn't handle the southpaw style at the beginning. How does he lose this fight? You always want to think about how you lose a fight before you start. I don't want to go into that in detail now. But, um, yeah, I fully expect him to win. OK, two more quick ones. Joe Joyce wins Saturday night, wins in big fashion, um, big knockout. Frank Warren said there could be a world title. Do you think Joe does get back to that level where he's fighting for a world title? Absolutely. Look, Joe Joyce is a name. He's a name in the heavyweight division. Same Chisora, same with Dillian White. People pay to see them that aren't friends and family. And he's right back in the frame, I think. You go back to September 2022, he was a top three in the world. He probably never runs top three after Fury and Usyk, after he beat Parker. Now he's gone down, he's still a top 10 fighter, we need to get him back up there. I actually think this win and another big win after that brings him right into world title range. Okay, Adam, last one. What does happen, in your opinion? I think Joe isn't you know, famed, as we said earlier in this interview, for his one-punch knockout power. I think probably Derek comes quick into the fight. I think Joe... Joe might take a little bit of punishment early. I think when we get to kind of round three or four, Joe will start to take over. Uh, he'll outland Derek massively. I think Derek will probably then revert to type kind of Chisora Parker two, pot shotting from the ropes. I think you won't see much movement from Derek. He'll just be throwing single shots. And I think Joe will grind him down and win late. I know I said last one, but why is this a 10-rounder and not a 12-rounder? Is there any particular reason? No, I mean, 12-rounders are a reserve for certain kind of title fights. It's just not one of them. Okay, Adam, thank you very much for speaking to IFL TV. I know you 
in a little bit of pain with your tooth. So uh, you are the, one of the last men standing. So thank you very much for giving me a bit of your time and best of luck with Joe on Saturday night. Wall Street memes casino. I'm fine. And sportsbook.